Filmmaking is not math. It's jazz. Yeah, yeah. That's a Todd thing. Oh, okay. Todd says that. I just love <laughs> saying it. I remember him saying that like ages ago, like, I don't know, three movies ago. But I just love it. It's like it's such a great expression because when we were talking about somebody we had both worked with who was super scientific about the way he would edit a movie and the way he would treat even jokes. And it was like, if the joke worked, it would get made in the movie. But almost like it was just a, it was it was where you were trying to turn filmmaking into math that I think Todd was like, yeah, it's like you can't one plus one doesn't equal two in filmmaking. It's just something different. You want one plus one, frankly, to e equal three. Right? You want it to be greater than the sum of its parts. And there's an intangible in there that is the, the missing one. Right. And that intangible is like the thing that is the jazz. It's the. It's the being super present when you're making a movie and watching everybody else move and just, which is what jazz is, right? Like when they start, when jazz starts, it doesn't know where it's going, doesn't know where it ends. And everybody has to really be in sync and watch each other and find their own place within the song, right? So you, you just, like, it's amazing when you watch them. They just, one guy takes over and suddenly has like a little solo on the drums and then it switches back into like all four pieces working together and then suddenly now the trumpet has a solo and all that ways in which everybody has a place to shine but you're still working as a group and 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 the fact that you don't necessarily know where it's going i think is just a cool way to think about filmmaking is that you have this structure which is your screenplay and your plan but that you really should just just sometimes just feel it out and uh and, and that way it'll allow you to discover a new piece of music that you didn't write before then, right? It's like then it becomes something brand new. And that's the part of it that I really love that expression. How did that happen on Joker? Well, that was sort of that thing of, of, um, of not rehearsing and not, you know, and just, just, you know, we started getting to the place of just rolling the minute Joaquin would walk into the room kind of oh, thing. Wow. And so sometimes you just would roll into it and, you know, you knew the structure. He was going to be writing his journal or he was going to do this because you still have to tell a story linearly enough that you know you're tracking all the things you want to track. So otherwise the movie can feel too improvisational, right? Like, and then it starts to feel a bit, you know, meandering and lost. And some of those movies can work. But I also like, you know, when a movie has a certain that you are following enough of a structure that you're telling a very specific story. Now, within the body of that specific structure, you can be improvisational and have some of that jazz, right? Which is just to allow the actor enough freedom to be able to do what they want to do and not bound it into something where, you know, and, and that's where the other actors that would have to act against Joaquin would also have to stay in that rhythm. And that, you know, and, and you'd watch some actors would do it beautifully. I thought that Brian Tyree Henry did it immaculately well because it's just an example of the rhythm and the way in which Joaquin would drive a scene was always different. And just his pacing and even if the words were similar, it was just the way in which he would work that, um, that you know, Brian had to stay in sync with that. And sometimes we would intentionally like that scene we intentionally cross shot which is not something most dps would go to normally because it's somewhat compromising right where you actually shoot both people at the same time right normally you shoot one at a time then the other person cut them against each other simply because you can just control the lighting and the and they can compromise each other if you do this but we shot that scene purposely at the same time cross shooting it with two cameras because knowing that if Joaquin was going to do something that was a little off base, we wouldn't necessarily want to have to replicate it on the other side. So we would want to have the real time, you know, reaction of we would try to do that as much as possible. Um, and so, you know, and a lot of them, a lot of the movie as you know, one or two people in scenes. So sometimes that was a little bit easier to do. But if we could shoot the, the two people, we we did it simply so that, you know, we didn't have to feel like suddenly Joaquin had to match something when he did it on the other person's coverage. So that was a big part of, of like allowing that improvisation to happen uh, so we could do very few takes 
but Joaquin had the freedom to know that, that it was being captured in whatever he did. And with that freedom, would Joaquin ask questions about the character, or was it just, it was like he had already, he, he knew Arthur so well? Oh, I mean, there are so many smoke breaks between Todd and Joaquin <laughs> that there are, there are a lot of questions. That That's its own this. movie right there. You should yeah. have gotten B-roll on that. Oh, show. I know. <laughs> just like, the, just the, 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 the cigarette break. The... Um, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of being a director and, and certainly is they have conversations that are like wonderful and myriad of stuff that and I'm frankly not necessarily always privy to. So I think they talked for hours. Like they talked after hours. There were a lot of questions and a lot of conversations about who the character was. That's all in there. It's not like Joaquin had a very keen sense and then that was it and we shot it for 58 days. Oh. That they were adjusting it all the time. It's I think one of the things that Todd does really well is, is also just that he's he's super fluid as far as recognizing that the movie is being made every day and you're discovering what the movie is every day. You have a plan, but you're really making the movie day by day and and it's adjusting day by day. So you know, you're making adjustments to the character and you're discovering new things about the character and, and all of these things. And so that's happening all the time. And Todd's really good about allowing that to happen because I think it's a really good trait in a director is to not be so single-minded and focused on your plan that you lose sight of potentially a better plan.